The RuneScape map is segmented into chunks. Using the extreme one-chunk Iron Man rules, I adhere to an extreme approach using Limpwort's rules. This is requiring me to accomplish all tasks within my designated chunk before progressing to the next one. This entails obtaining and equipping best in slot drops, shop items, and rewards for all three combat styles. I strive to conquer the most challenging skilling tasks, complete quests, achievement diaries, and comeback tasks as far as possible. Additionally, I will fill out every collection log slot and complete all mini games. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode. My name is Chunk Zia and I am on my extreme one-chunk Iron Man journey. In my previous episode, I achieved a significant milestone by completing the Hasidia starting chunk. In my journey, I reached a cooking level of 58, enabling me to bake pita bread. This was accomplished by cooking raw beef from the northern cow pen and baking thousands of apple pies with supplies from Logava Grickler's cooking supply store. In addition, I reached level 40 in thieving, allowing me to pickpocket from Hosidius guards. Fortune smiled upon me as I received Rocky at an early level of 55 in thieving, a truly lucky drop. I then rolled my first chunk, unlocking the cooking mess chunk. This provided me with a new bank and a convenient place to refill jugs with water, essential for baking stew, my best in slot food. With no new requirements added, I rolled another chunk, unlocking the Hosidius Peninsula. This chunk revealed magic trees, several fishing spots, and hobgoblin spawns. However, without the necessary tools for fishing or woodcutting, my only new requirement was to defeat hobgoblins for their 1 in 128 drop of a steel longsword. After securing the steel longsword, I rolled yet another chunk, unlocking the Hosidius Vinery. As no farming training methods were unlocked, the Hosidius Vinery did not add any new requirements. I rolled another chunk and unlocked the Tithe Farm Chunk. Despite not having access to the Tithe Farm minigame, this chunk did present me with several sand crab spawns. Interestingly, sand crabs drop an iron pickaxe, unlocking the mining skill once I gain access to a suitable rock. The Tithe Farm minigame also marked the unlocking of my first Lovakeng minecart station, enabling me to unlock any chunk that the minecart can transfer me to. It's worth noting that the requirement to have been to a specific minecart before being able to travel to it using the minecart system was removed in the game update on January 10th, 2024. After obtaining the iron pickaxe from a sand crab, I rolled my next chunk, the Piscarilius Station. The Piscarilius Station has a shooting star landing site, which necessitates reaching level 90 in mining to mine a tier 90 star. I can train my mining skill once I unlock an appropriate mining rock. Additionally, I've already acquired an iron pickaxe drop from a sand crab. This chunk also features a highwayman. I quickly defeated one and obtained my new best-in-slot cape. This cape increases my defensive stats. It is officially now black cape season. Now, let's delve into the primary challenge of the chunk, the Shazian Headguard. This formidable level 84 adversary wields a dragon longsword and a dragon square shield. My mission is to secure two specific drops, a rune scimitar and a rune kite shield. Both items have a drop rate of 1 in 512, adding a layer of difficulty to the task. After more than 10 hours of flinching the Shazian headguard, while also leveraging the organized crime minigame drop table to my advantage, I successfully obtained both drops, along with a full set of black armor. Now, it was time to roll a new chunk. Wow, this changes everything. The Port Piscarilius chunk has been unlocked. This will greatly expand my map of rollable chunks. Veo serves as a boatmaster, facilitating my journey between Port Piscarilius, Port Serim, and Land's End. This method represents one of two possible routes to access the mainland. 
The charter ships allows me to roll five new chunks on the mainland. Many of these locations comes with very tough grinds. Now that you're up to date with the progress of my latest episode and I have completed the Port Piscarillus chunk, it's time to roll a new chunk. Let's do this! Roll time! Please, not 2000 Chamber of Xerix hard mode kill count. I've rolled the Western Woodcutting Chunk, which I can access via the Minecart system. Let's go and explore the chunk. A quick Minecart ride takes me to my newly unlocked chunk. Tall reeds are aquatic plants found in various locations, including the Karazi Jungle, Kurand Woodland, by the River Salve, and in the garden of the Ratcatcher's Mansion. These reeds play a crucial role in the Legends Guild quest, where they are used to create holy water. However, beyond their functional significance in the quest, they serve no other purpose. Their presence on Zaya is purely aesthetic. To gain entry to the Woodcutting Guild, I'll need a woodcutting level of 60. However, at the moment, I don't have access to an axe to train my woodcutting skills. After meticulously examining every tile within the chunk, I regret to report that no additional requirements were discovered. However, before we proceed to generate a new chunk, let's take a moment to preview the neighboring chunks surrounding the Western Woodcutting Guild. The Shazian Town Center area to the north grants access to various shops, one of which is Daryl's Ranging Surplus. Daryl's shop specializes in archery equipment including ranging bows and arrows, essential for unlocking the ranging skill. To explore this area, I'll need to wield a maple shortbow along with adamant arrows. The Eastern Woodcutting Guild chunk unlocks the eastern area of the Woodcutting Guild. This area includes Perry's Chop Chop's shop, where axes up to the rune are available. Before I can access his shop, I must diligently raise my woodcutting level to 60, which will require an axe from a future chunk. Once that milestone is achieved, it will accelerate my leveling up to level 90, required to cut redwood trees. Embarking on the South Karend Woodland chunk is set to be a marathon, not a sprint. It's home to barbarians known for their bronze and iron axe drops, essential for training wood cutting. To harness the full potential of this skill, I'll need to diligently level up my wood cutting to level 90 using an iron axe, which will enable me to cut the towering redwood trees. Additionally, I must advance my fletching to level 92, which is the prerequisite for crafting a redwood shield. Fingers crossed that I unlock a superior axe before fate decides to assign me this chunk. Setting forth into the west core and woodland chunk promises to be a substantial endeavor. This chunk is the domain of the formidable moss giants, notorious for their elusive long and curved bone drops. The coveted curved bone, in particular, boasts an extraordinary rarity with a drop rate of 1 in 5,012 drop rate. Fortunately, this chunk has become significantly less perilous since I've armed myself with my trusty rune scimitar, a game-changer in my adventures. That concludes our journey through the currently unlocked rollable chunks. The moment has arrived to venture into a new chunk. Let the dice roll and destiny unfold. Onward to new adventures. Let's roll another chunk. Yes, let's go. I've just gained access to the tranquil East Hasidia shoreline. While it may seem serene at first glance, there's always room for discovery. So, let's set out and explore the hidden wonders this coastal stretch has to offer. The eastern Hasidius shoreline chunk is utterly devoid of any activity. There are no monsters, 
No clue steps, no quests, and no item spawns. Just an entirely vacant chunk. I must admit I find this situation rather humorous. With no further rollable chunks unveiled in this chunk, the stage is set for a fresh chunk roll. Let's roll a new chunk. Please, I don't want to bake 67,000 apple pies. Let's win the lottery. This changes everything. I have rolled the Eastern Woodcutting Guild chunk. The Eastern Woodcutting Guild chunk is a gem awaiting discovery. Currently, I cannot enter the guild with the level 60 woodcutting requirement out of reach. However, the future holds promise, as securing an axe in a future chunk will unlock significant benefits. This guild isn't merely a place to train my woodcutting skill. It's a haven that offers a hidden plus 7 woodcutting boost and the convenience of a nearby bank. Moreover, the guild is home to two pivotal shops, the sawmill shop. I can procure essential items like nails, bolts of cloth, and most importantly, a saw. This ensures that my journey to construction mastery, level 99, isn't hampered by the absence of such a crucial tool. Take note, Limpwort, I will not repeat construction training to level 99 without a saw. Perry's Chop Chop Shop. This establishment caters to the ambitious woodcutter, offering axes that ascend to the esteemed rune tier. Gaining access to the woodcutting guild will be a game changer, propelling my experience to new heights. After meticulously examining every tile within the chunk, I regret to report that no additional requirements were found. However, before we proceed to roll a new chunk, Let's take a moment to preview the neighboring chunks surrounding the Eastern Woodcutting Guild. The Watson's House chunk unlocks the crafting skill. The reason for this unlock is that a spinning wheel is found inside the Watson's House. To complete this chunk, I will need to train my crafting level to level 43 in order to cut one of the uncut diamonds that I received from a random event. I will be able to train my crafting by spinning ball of wool and bowstrings. I cannot access Watson's house through the main entrance because doing so would take me outside my chunk. However, there is a stile in the fence that provides access to the house. This stile does not have any requirements. The charcoal burner's chunk unlocks the farming skill. This is because making super compost using saltpeter awards farming experience. Having unlocked this farming method, I will need to train my farming level to 74 in order to plant a Logavano fruit in the Tithe Farm minigame. Additionally, I'll need to obtain all the necessary items from the minigame. This chunk also unlocks more sand crab spawns. The Crab Claw Caves chunk does not introduce any new requirements. However, it is essential for completing the The Queen of Thieves quest, making it potentially useful in the future. That concludes our journey through the currently unlocked rollable chunks. The moment has arrived to venture into a new chunk. Let the dice roll and destiny unfold. Onward to new adventures. Please, I am not ready to hunt Sarachnus for its pet. Let's win the lottery! I have rolled the Shazian's Gate Chunk. I can access it using the minecart system. Let's go and explore. The Shazian's Gate lies a considerable distance from the chunks I've previously unlocked anticipating the discovery of many new music tracks. A lynx is an exclusive cat-like monster found on Zaya, primarily used for training combat stats. Despite dealing minimal damage and lacking defensive stats, lynxes drop only bones and easy clue scrolls.
To access the Lizardmen, I'll need to unlock this particular chunk. These creatures drop the Xerix Talisman, a valuable item for teleporting around Zia. The scenery here is one of my favorites across RuneScape. It is very unique. The Shazian prison is an underground prison. Several guards and a head guard can be found here guarding the cells. A range and sink can be found here as well. During the quest A Kingdom Divided, players travel to the prison to speak to Martin Holt in order to obtain information that could prove Kubek Unkar's corruptive practices within the Karend Council. After the quest, the remaining members of the council are arrested and are held in custody here, where they await their trials. After meticulously examining every tile within the chunk, I regret to report that no additional requirements were found. However, before we proceed to roll a new chunk, let's take a moment to preview the neighboring chunks surrounding the Shazian's gate. The Shazian's dock chunk unlocks access to the giant's den, the Giant's Den is a dungeon located just southwest of the Giant Pit, within a cave housing a variety of giants. Giants in the den have access to the catacombs of Kurend Drop Table, including dark totem pieces and ancient shards. The catacombs effect of restoring prayer points when bones are buried also applies within the Giant's Den. The vine ladder near the skeletons inside the catacombs of Kurend must first be used to travel to the giant's den to unlock the strange passage. After it is unlocked, it can be used to travel both ways. This means that I cannot access the catacombs of Kurend from the giant's den. If I unlock this chunk, I will also have to obtain a giant's key, a mossy key, a long bone and a curved bone at a drop rate of 1 in 5,013. Also note that the boat to Lake Mulch is just outside of the chunk. The Graveyard of Heroes encompasses an intriguing area, the entrance to the Shazian Crypt. This ancient dungeon lies in the southwestern part of the graveyard, within the Shazian region. Brave adventurers who venture here must carry a light source as the crypts teem with tiny, relentless insects. But what lies beyond the threshold? Within the crypts, Formidable level 132 zombies await. These undead assailants attack with all three combat styles, making them a challenging adversary. Their high maximum hit, combined with the crypt's multi-combat nature, adds to the difficulty of facing them. However, the rewards are enticing. The zombies drop sought-after items, including the Rune Helm and Adamant Axe. Both will be my new best in slot. The ruins of Mora Chunk presents a formidable challenge. Within this area, I'll encounter skeletons, which have a rare drop rate of 1 in 64 for an iron axe. Acquiring this iron axe is essential for unlocking both woodcutting and fletching skills. To achieve this, I'll need to diligently train my abilities, reach level 90 in woodcutting to cut redwood logs, and attain level 92 in fletching to craft a redwood shield. The Shazian's Wall Chunk presents a unique challenge. To unlock its secrets, I must complete an Achievement Diary task by eliminating a Lizard Man. Additionally, I'll need to acquire a Xerix Talisman as a rare drop. This talisman enables me to teleport to various locations across Great Korend. That concludes our journey through the currently unlocked rollable chunks. The moment has arrived to venture into a new chunk. Let the dice roll and destiny unfold. Onward to new adventures. Please, I don't want to bake 67,000 apple pies. Yes, let's go. Wow, that was not what I expected. I can only access a small selection of my chunk.
This chunk only unlock one more rollable chunk, the Arcuus Library. This library is a treasure trove for aspiring rune crafters. By diligently searching for ancient tomes and texts, I'll earn valuable rune crafting experience. The process of discovering these books is not only rewarding, but also counts as an easy diary task. Furthermore, within the library, I can embark on the initial phase of the intriguing Bear Your Soul mini-quest. The moment has arrived to venture into a new chunk. Let the dice roll and destiny unfold. Onward to new adventures. This changes everything. Major fishing and cooking grinds will be required before my next chunk roll. Let's take a look. Port Piscarilius is a port primarily inhabited by fishermen who rely on the fishing industry for their source of income, in addition to overseas trade. All visitors from the mainland often come through here or Land's End. The port is known for its high crime rate, with newcomers to the kingdom warning other new arrivals of the thieves that run rampant in Port Piscarilius. This is due to the political corruption within the Piscarilius authorities, allowing thieves and smugglers, such as Captain Kialed, to steal artifacts from houses in the residential district through bribery and shipping the stolen goods overseas. This fishing store provides all the essentials I need to train my fishing level and reel in those elusive sharks. However, the journey won't be easy. I'll have to acquire a big base with a one in a thousand drop rate, a big swordfish with a one in three thousand drop rate, and a big shark with a one in five thousand drop rate. This grind is going to span months before I can proudly claim my trophy catches. I started my fishing training at level 10 because of some fishing experience I had earned from Bob the Cat Random Events. These are the fishing training methods available to me in my current chunk. Level 23 fishing allows me to catch raw cod, significantly increasing my experience rates. I'm just a few minutes away from hitting the six-hour logout timer while training my fishing. Perhaps I'm taking this a tad too seriously. No? Okay. Let's keep fishing. Level 30 fishing allows me to catch raw salmon. Fishing raw salmon is a very common fishing power training method. Level 35 fishing allows me to catch tuna. I will be catching a lot of tuna when once I unlock swordfish fishing. I will need to get a big swordfish at a drop rate of 1 in 2,500. In this thrilling episode, I carved out five new chunks of progress, sculpting my account into a masterpiece. The sweat, the late nights, the countless clicks, it's all paying off. But buckle up because the next chapter is a quest for the ages. The elusive fishing trophies await. Picture this, 90 sharks an hour, each cast a prayer to the RNG gods. The drop rate, a mere one in 5,000. But fear not, fellow adventurers. I'm not just fishing for pixels, I am chasing dreams. My resolve burns hotter than a dragon's breath. When the grind feels like an uphill battle, I will remember this. Every click inches me closer to glory. The sun may rise and set, but my determination remains unwavering. For those who've journeyed this far, heed the call. Add Chunk C in game, and who knows? You might be one of the lucky 10 to receive a secret reward. Slide into my private messages and let destiny unfold. Stay relentless. Stay legendary. Thank you for watching.